first question is how? Thank you. Brooke. How did you manage to piece this story together? How they were kidnapped? How they were held? Down to the proof of life questions. How'd you get that? Um, it started almost by almost by mistake. I was in Europe uh, this past summer in June, uh, working on a different story. I was I was researching the the use of ransoms by Al Qaeda groups, and uh, one of the former ISIS hostages agreed to see me. Uh, I, I knew that James Foley was missing, and I had heard sort of through the grapevine that he was being held by ISIS. But what I did not know and what was shocking to me is that there were at least 23 foreigners, almost all of them European, uh, who were held uh, with Foley in this particular uh, network of jails in Aleppo and in Raqqa. Uh, and this hostage who spoke to me became my guide. He, he first of all outlined uh, the, the moment when each of them was taken, how they were taken, and then how ISIS systematically divided them up into groups based on which, uh, which nationalities they thought would negotiate with them first. The detail you had about the Thank hostages you. being, being um, happy is overstating it, but being relieved when they saw someone being yes. beaten and bloodied because that meant they weren't, at least they weren't waterboarded. The details of this imaginary risk right. game, the, the scribbling in the paper of, of chess, and, and as I mentioned before, that, that secret Santa that James Foley, you know, exchanged gifts with his family every Christmas. But in the end, as far as his right. fate, let me just loop back around to that, eventually he became yes. convinced he would die in captivity. What convinced him of that? Mm -hmm. Final question. You know, I think uh, I think James Foley stayed hopeful up until the very end. But there's there's a letter that is smuggled out, I believe, uh, in June by by a fellow hostage who is being released, and um, and this person gives it to the Foley family, and the Foleys have since published a letter. The letter is full of expressions of love, um, and, and also moments of hope, where he's describing that look, it's it's gotten better, we're getting more food than before. But I read this letter very carefully. And there's just a sentence in there where he throws in instructions to his parents on how to disperse the money in his bank account. Um, and so, you know, it, it foreshadows that he, that he might have known that he was not going to come out ali alive. What, what is so tragic to me is in, in their very difficult captivity, a majority of the, of the European and Western hostages converted to Islam. Uh, some of them did it, uh, all of them I think did it initially under, under duress. Uh, some of them did it as a way to save themselves. Uh, but James Foley and I think Peter Kasich, uh, who is now called Abdul Rahman and who's the next person who is, who is in line to be killed next, I think they were the two that, that were truly sincere in, uh, in their new faith. And, um, and Yeyoen Bontek, who is this young Belgian jihadist who was held with him, told me that the moment that, that, that he saw the execution video, the thing that shocked him is seeing James Foley without a beard. Uh, Foley had a beard up until the moment of his death because he had become a Muslim. And ISIS, I, I feel it shows the great hypocrisy of this group. They converted him, but in the moment of his death, they presented him to us as a kufar, mm. uh, an infidel, uh, you know, just, just uh, somebody who is not of the faith.